Good afternoon, Southwest Florida. I'm Bree Walling. This Naples Herald lunch break is sponsored by our friends at Husilo Kia of Cape Coral. This afternoon, we'll tell you about a string of crime in Lehigh Acres keeping LCSO busy. The men arrested in a Starbucks calling for real changes in racial inequality and more. Today is Thursday, April 19th, and this is the lunch break. A man found alongside the road in Lehigh is the latest victim in an unconnected string of homicides that has plagued Lee County this month. Deputies responded to the call about a deceased male found at the intersection of Sparta Avenue and Scottsdale Street in a still open investigation that led detectives to determine that the death was a homicide. More details will be released as they become available. This discovery was just four days after detectives began another homicide investigation in Lehigh after deputies responded to calls of disturbance at Acacia Avenue. Under Sheriff Carmine Marcino announced the arrest of 20-year-old Ricky Legond last week for the robbery and murder of a cab driver in Lehigh at the beginning of the month. Marcino said in a press conference that it appears the crime was premeditated and that the victim was targeted, then brutally and senselessly murdered. A new gambling deal between the Seminole Tribe and the state has been reached where the tribe will continue to pay the state $300 million a year in exchange for exclusive rights to offer card games such as blackjack and slot machines outside of Broward and Miami-Dade counties. Governor Scott made the announcement in a statement on Wednesday while boasting that the Seminole Compact has generated more than $1.75 billion, which has helped make investments in things like Florida's education and environment. With the agreement, the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation can and continue its work of aggressively following and enforcing Florida's strict gambling laws. Debate over the compact has gone back and forth since 2015 when a provision allowing exclusivity in banked card games expired. The tribe continued to make the payments in exchange for more aggressive enforcement of the games. But the temporary deal ended in March, and though legislators were mulling a special session to make the changes on how the state negotiates gambling rights, the latest deal heads off the issue for at least the next year. Voters, however, will have the option to take Take control of it in November. The Southwest Airlines pilot being lauded as a hero in a harrowing emergency landing is also being hailed for her pioneering role in a career where she's been one of the few women at the controls. Tammy Jo Schultz is one of the first female fighter pilots in the U.S. Navy and was captain and piloting the damaged jet when it made an emergency landing Tuesday in Philadelphia. One of the engines on the Boeing 737 exploded while the plane was traveling 500 miles per hour at 30,000 feet with 149 people on board. Schultz calmly relayed details about the crisis to air traffic controllers, and passengers commended her handling of the situation. In a statement late Wednesday, Schultz said she felt like she was simply doing her job, and friends and family said that's just the way she's wired. Schultz was commissioned into the Navy back in 1985, reaching the rank of lieutenant commander. Women aviators were excluded from combat missions until the month after Schultz got off active duty in 1993, but Schultz flew during Operation Desert Storm trainings as an aggressor enemy pilot. She was featured in the book Military Fly moms along with the stories and photos of 69 other women U.S. military veterans. In light of the tragic outcome for one victim, Schultz's cool demeanor was exactly what the rest of the souls on board needed to head off an even worse possible outcome. Two black men waiting for a business meeting to discuss real estate at a Starbucks became famous after an incredible display of racial discrimination. The event that led to the eventual arrest of Rashawn Nelson and longtime friend Dante Robinson went viral after a woman captured the encounter on her phone and uploaded it to the internet. The two men said they didn't realize at first that police inside the store were there for them and said that as with any encounter with police as black men, they feared for their lives. Luckily, they followed instruction and complied and hours later were released without charges. Attorney Stuart Cohen, representing Nelson and Robinson, said the men were illegally profiled, pointing to Title II of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of race. In the weeks since, the men have met with Starbucks CEO, who has called the arrest reprehensible, and have started pushing for lasting changes to ensure what happened to them doesn't happen to anyone else. Robinson said he appreciates the public support, but believes anger and boycotting Starbucks are not the solution. He said it's time to pay attention and understand what's really going on. They just want a seat at the table. And that was a lunch break for today. I'm Bree Walling. For your twice daily news fix, head over to the Naples Herald YouTube channel and subscribe. Leave us a comment to let us know your thoughts on the news or what you would like to hear about. The lunch break airs Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. right here at NaplesHerald.com. And don't forget to check out our morning report that also airs Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.